All right, so welcome everyone to today's uh, Ministry of Communications broadcast. The reason we're hosting this panel session is because it just so happens that not only am I active right now, but all of my uh, deputy ministers are also here. And so it felt like the perfect time to run through what the Ministry of Communications has been doing uh, over the course of the last one and a half months or so of this term and to answer any questions that the public might have uh, and take suggestions on how to improve. So as Minister of Communications, the first thing that I did was that I uh, appointed three deputies. Um, these deputies were meant to serve uh, in the three main projects that are going on this term, those being uh, Marcus Antonius for the North Star, uh, Mouth for the Northern Lights, and Barbarino for the Northern Broadcast Service. Um, and so far this term, uh, my expectations have been met of my deputies, and I think we're plowing forward very, very well with what we're doing. Um, Barbarino, would you like to talk about uh, what you've been doing so far with NBS and the progress that we've made on uh, announcing different shows and new show hosts? Yeah, I'll give a quick rundown of that. Um... So basically what we've been doing is we've got not only are the mainstays of, the, of NBS um, hosting news shows and we've announced a planned split between the larger um, long form news shows that tend to run very lengthy and then like smaller 15 to 30 minute episodes that would be planned to run for like say 15 minutes, 30 minutes, that kind of time frame. Um, and we'd be doing those on a weekly or bi-weekly um, basis, based as things like as things came up. Um, and we also announced a newer program where some people that were previously not involved with NBS would be hosting their own NBS shows. Uh, not partic not that are separate from either news shows or our long form um, episodes that you've been accustomed to. Like, for example, um, Bootsy Radio, where he gets on voice chat with someone and interviews them, um, is being started up, as, as well as some other programs that other people that were not previously involved with NBS have the opportunity to and can and will be hosting newer, um, maybe not, maybe tangentially related to nation states and maybe completely out of character. Like, for example, mine is about sports. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of where, that's kind of the direction we're taking it with. Um, and I'm really proud of the progress that we've made. Um, and I think we've hit the ground running really well, and I'm excited for the rest of the term and to see the progress that comes therein. Yeah, thanks for speaking up about that. Um, that's a pretty great overview. And to give a little bit of uh, sort of background for those who don't know, um, basically since the beginning of my last term in office, we've been trying to get NBS back off the ground because it basically just disappeared for... Uh, you know, it went on a hiatus for several months and basically nothing was published. Um, and so what we're trying to do is not only get it back started again, but, you know, fully revive it to way higher than it was when it was at its previous height. So bring it back, but then build on that progress and make it into an actual radio show that has regular publications that uh, might publish multiple episodes per week even. That's the hope that we can get it there by the end of this term um, and to really show off what it means to be uh, someone from the North Pacific. So the next thing that I wanted to discuss is the North Star. I know that Marcus Antonius isn't uh, capable of um, speaking up over VC, so I'm going to ask him a few questions, but he will respond via text and uh, I'll read out his responses so that the NBS show uh, listeners later can hear what uh, has been said. So the first thing uh, that I'll be asking is, uh, Marcus, could you run through uh, the work that you've been doing so far with the North Star 
uh, and tell us about the progress uh, towards getting TNS5 out by the end of this month. So while Marcus is providing his answer, I suppose I'll narrate a bit of the progress uh, that has been happening, and I'll, uh, I'll sort of give a, a bit of contextualization to Marcus's responses. So the North Star uh, has, since last term, uh, sort of undergone uh, a bit of a split from what it once was. So the history here is that uh, the North Star uh, is essentially what the Northern Lights was before I first took office under Suwale. Uh, we basically took uh, the, the more uh, repetitive uh, form reports that were published in the Northern Lights, such as the RA Highlights, uh, the WA Digest, uh, the Spotlight uh, section, um, and then any election reviews or highlights in that regard, um, and, and, t and taken those and put them into the North Star. And that's something that we did last term, uh, but we're continuing it that now. Uh, what has been somewhat of a change this term is that under uh, Marcus Antonius, uh, he has, as a deputy, fully taken over the publication, uh, so it doesn't really need to go past me anymore, uh, which is great because it gives uh, each of the deputies a certain amount of autonomy in that regard. Uh, they can make their own decisions, um, and with TNS, what that means is that it takes some of that loading off of myself, the minister, uh, making my job easier. Um, in the upcoming TNS uh, issue five, uh, as Marcus is articulating in the chat, um, I'll be doing the WA Digest. Uh, Dino is going to do uh, the NPA report, um, and he'll be working on an interview uh, sort of in the form of the spotlight that we've done in the past. Um, something that is a bit new or perhaps old, uh, depending on your perspective, is that instead of writing up our own uh, regional assembly highlights. Uh, we'll be looking to the speaker's office to make that publication happen, uh, and that will be reported through TNS uh, this time around. Hopefully, we can still match the March first publication date, uh, but 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 because we'll be uh, articulating that and coordinating it with the speaker's office, there might be some delays in that regard. Uh, the next thing then is the Northern Lights. Uh, Mouth, if you would like to start uh, describing what you've been doing for the Northern Lights uh, in the comments uh, here, that would be great. And in the meantime, I'll be discussing a little bit of the progress that we've made as well, and sort of the background to the paper. It looks like Melf is AFK. All right, that's fine. Uh, I'll just continue then um, with the description. So... The Northern Lights, as I mentioned before, has taken on a completely different, drastically new outlook from what was previously published in issues 25 and before. Um, what we've tried to do is radically just basically take a, we're making a paradigm shift over what was previously being published, and we're trying to bring it back to maybe issues one through five, but we're really trying to make it better than that, even. And so... What, what I've done is the first step was to ensure that uh, people who are writing for the Northern Lights know that it is a serious ordeal to sort of get through and get published. I'm trying to dissuade uh, authors who don't quite uh, understand that this is a uh, worldwide publication within the Northern, uh, uh, within nation states, that is. Um, and that this is something that, you know, we're, we're trying to show off the best that we can be as uh, nations of the North Pacific, and we're trying to show off our best selves. Um, so what that means is uh, that I've instituted a minimum word limit of 1,250 words uh, to make sure that really only serious uh, writers are participating. Uh, it's not a set limit. It's not really a hard limit in that sense. I'm just trying to make sure that people really... Um, put their best foot forward and are, are serious in the writing that they do. Of course, that said, I'm, I'm much more focused on quality over quantity. 
Uh, and so that's why I've sort of assembled a, a pretty good editing team for the paper. Um, so that includes myself. Uh, Ghost has participated to some extent. We've got uh, Sawale and Rachel signed up to be editors. And then, of course, Malf, my deputy minister. Uh, and together, we're uh, a pretty fine editing team. Um, and so far, we haven't made a whole lot of progress towards getting uh, the issue 27 out of the Northern Lights, but we do have each of our articles submitted. So you can look forward to uh, articles from BMW Surfer and Praetor, uh, from Wondrous, uh, and then also, uh, believe it or not, Sopo, um, who's sort of more of a foreigner, uh, foreigner to the to the North Pacific, although he is now a citizen, so perhaps he's more of an insider than we might have once thought of him. Altogether, uh, that means that the Northern Lights is moving on uh, as planned, and we have uh, the next graphic design for it uh, ready to go, and uh, hopefully that gets published by March 1st as well. So with that, those are the three main publications of the Ministry of Communications this term, the Northern Lights, the North Star, and the Northern Broadcasting Service, of which we are taking part in right now. Uh, and with that, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that anyone has, um, any suggestions that anyone has, any criticisms. Uh, we'd be happy to accommodate those, and we want to improve the ministry. That's why we're here. Yeah, feel free to... Um Feel free to ping me, either me or Fiji or the both of us, really, um, with any of your questions in that regard. I suppose I should also mention that on top of uh, hosting the three publications, we've also made progress in other areas. Um, the biggest one is internally. We've made an effort to uh, continue motivating our executive staff members to uh, basically just give them a bit of a reward for the effort uh, that they make when contributing to the ministry. Uh, and in that regard, we have put forward uh, points and ranks, much like the Ministry of Home Affairs has done. Um, and these will be awarded uh, on a term-by-term -term basis. Internally, we also have a roster similar to what we do with the NPA. Um, where we could keep track of who is due for what, who's doing what, who has done what, and um, it kind of helps with internal administration. Yeah, so that roster is how we're going to be making sure that uh, individuals who contribute get the points that they deserve and the awards that they deserve. Uh, but it also means that it helps us internally with... Uh, you know, figuring out um, who's done well within the ministry within a given term, and that might give the next minister an educated decision on who to appoint for uh, deputies. Darkania has a question. When are you going to stop stealing from my ministry? Um, and I guess that's in reference to the fact that Malf and Bob Reno are uh, deputies of his as well as they are of mine. Uh, and my response to that is uh, probably never, because you know people who are active in the NPA are likely going to be active in other sections of, of of you know the North Pacific as well, and we need to share active members as best as we can. Um, and so I hope that there isn't a conflict between our ministries, uh, but I'll definitely uh, you know. You know, there's 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 only so many people who are active in the North Pacific, and uh, you know we have to do our best to share them between us. I'm Deputy Minister of Defense, Home Affairs, and Communications, as well as being a Deputy Speaker. So I'm I'm kind of doing the paperwork for quite a few different people. Um, please reward me. Please make me a minister. We should just call you deputy from here on out, honestly. Like, forget the deputy yeah. of this, deputy of... You're just the deputy. Yeah, it's basically the slave. Also, Darkania, I most definitely stole the reward system from Home Affairs, not from the NPA. So, 
in that case, I, I maybe HA stole it from the NPA, so I'm getting it, you know, one step removed, but yeah. Also, the roster setup, I didn't steal from the NPA either. I stole that idea from Foreign Affairs, in fairness. Which apparently was itself stolen from the NPA, so, all right. In, like, basically today's lesson, kids, join the NPA, um, because you can learn a lot of different things in the NPA. Uh, the place where innovation that's happens. Where people cut their teeth. Hail Floof. All right, so at this point, because there's clearly not a whole lot of other questions being asked, we're just going to open up the floor and we're going to have a general VC uh, because I think that's a cool idea and I don't really care who talks at this point. So we'll unmute everyone and make sure that uh, anyone can talk when they want.